Culture Live Galair August Law Forik Hona Agwiv. Welcome to our special St. Patrick's Day broadcast from Athlone County Westmead. And we're here at Sean's Bar, the oldest pub in Ireland. Dates back to 900 AD when a man called Lewin, where Athlone gets his name from, sailed from Loch, R- Loch Ree down along the river and opened a little bar here before there was any town. So no better place to have a special St. Patrick's Day broadcast. So folks, we're going to have some music. We're going to have dancing. We're going to have whiskey talking. We're going to have storytelling. We're going to have the crack. So welcome to our St. Patrick's Day broadcast. Take it away with some fine tunes. I'm a stocks, my frog, a gun, rock, a red dove. My stocks, my frog, a gun, rock, a red dove. My stocks, my frog, a gun, rock, a red dove. It's my napkin, pocket, a blink, still on you. Tanyadin's a sleeve, a gun, rock, a red dove. Tanyadin's a sleeve, a gun, rock, a red dove. Tanyadin's a sleeve, a gun, rock, a red dove. It's the rocky ship, or her a conquering creek. The utility of the dee doodle 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 dee
But the legal version of that is your Irish triple distilled whiskey. Um, what is better, the Irish whiskey, the Scotch whiskey, the bourbon whiskey, the completely a matter of opinion. I'm not going to be the one to tell you which one it is. But fact is, up to the beginning of the 20th century, Irish whiskey was outselling the Scotch whiskey, four cases to one. Um, bourbon whiskey was just starting to come onto the world market. So that means everybody was drinking Irish whiskey in those days. Okay, It did slightly die away. In the 1920s, the prohibition in America, of course, was a big, big cause of that. That was the biggest, call, um, the biggest market for Irish whiskey. And with the collapse of this market, Irish whiskey distilleries started closing down. Uh, we ended up with only four distilleries in all of Ireland. So the Scotch whiskey sales took over the world whiskey sales. But we're coming back slowly but surely. We have over 70 live working distilleries all over Ireland again. And most of these have only popped up over the last 10 years. Irish whiskey, as I said, is triple distilled. Scotch whiskey, double distilled. American bourbon, single distilled. And that's why Irish whiskey has become known as a very soft, mellow type of whiskey to consume. And that is why it has gained popularity all over the world over recent years again. What is very unique to Irish whiskey is what we call a pot still Irish whiskey. Okay? Yeah, in Scotland, of course, you have mostly your single malt whiskies. In Ireland, we also have our single malts, but the pot still whiskey is unique to Irish whiskey. And a pot still whiskey is a, is a <laughs> the, sorry, the pot still whiskey is a mash of malted and fresh green summer barley coming directly from the field. The reason how this pot still whiskey became developed in the late 19th century, all our whiskey would have been single malt in those days. But we, of course, in the 19th century, we were still under British rule. And instead of charging us extra money to sell our whiskey, they started charging us to malt our, whis uh, to malt our barley. And we didn't want to pay all these extra taxes. So what did we start doing? We started experimenting and we started using the fresh barley directly from the field, which meant we had to use much less malted barley, which of course meant we had to use or pay way less taxes. We kept working at it and eventually we came up with the recipe of 60% malted barley, 40% fresh green summer barley. And then we were only paying 60% of the original taxes, which was the main reason of it all. But the result came that with this malted barley, you had this lovely sweet softness coming from your whiskey. The green summer barley, incorporating that into the recipe, give it that little bit of more spice, peppercorn spice that was left on your tongue and you were left with a lovely long, long spicy finish. And that's what Irish whiskey nowadays is becoming most known for the so-called pot still whiskey. And that's exactly what I have in a glass here. Okay, a lovely dram of your pot still six-year-old whiskey, 60% of this whiskey is your malted barley recipe and then 40% is your fresh green summer barley. So this is the original recipe that became developed in the very late 20th, uh, 19th century. Um, this is a whiskey from one of the new distilleries popping up in Ireland from just outside Kilkenny town down in the southeast. And as you can see, the beautiful golden color coming straight away from the maturation in your oak barrels. In America, in Ireland, we use American oak bourbon barrels, and that's exactly what has been used here. We also use other barrels, but that is our predominantly used barrel, the American oak bourbon barrels, where the bourbon would have been matured in first. Irish law states three years and one day is the minimum for that spirit to stay in that barrel. And over these years, the longer you leave it mature, the tannin is being extracted out of the wood, out of the oak, and that is what's giving you this lovely, golden color, as well as some of the bourbon, which has been left behind in the barrel has given you this lovely goldenness. So what I would suggest, first of all, if you're tasting a new whiskey that you haven't tasted before, the first thing to do, give it a twirl and give it a swirl in the glass, not a twirl, a swirl. Okay. And what you end up with is a lovely oiliness. You're not going to see that on the camera, but you wait for it in your glass. You've seen all these oils coming down the side of your glass. The longer that whiskey has been matured for, the more of these oils you're going to slowly see coming down like little tears. And that's why in wine, we call it the legs. In whiskey, we call it the tears because they look like little teardrops forming and coming down the side of your glass. Okay. So we've done that. From the result of my glass, I can see this is quite an old whiskey. And as I've already said, it is a six year old. So that's giving you a nice liquidy or oily solution coming down the side. So there you got that lovely sweetness, a little bit of spice coming through. It's nearly like your summer harvest of your fresh barley. That's what's coming through, fresh cut field 
You're getting the oak coming through and you're actually getting a little bit of sharpness from your bourbon. The bourbon that has been extracted out of the wood um, is also been leaving a trace in your whiskey. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of sweetness like an apple. Okay, the first thing you want to do is it, is it sweet, is it sour, is it bitter? Divide it into each three of those three things. I have now said it's a sweet. If I say it's sweet, is it sugar sweet? Is it fruity sweet? I'm getting the fruity sweetness of it, like a green apple. And as I said, a little bit of oak, a little bit of bourbon coming through. I'm gonna have a little taste now, okay? With a pot still, very, very important. You're gonna get a lot of spice on your palate, especially on the tip of your tongue, so don't rush. Take a little bit, leave it sit on your palate, chew it apart. It's gonna warm up in your mouth. You'd rather get the spice here, then get it down here when it's going down okay so hold it as long as you can let it melt away in your mouth okay and as we say in ireland slide you up chew it breathe in you're getting that spice on the very tip of your tongue okay you've got the warmth all over your mouth of course you're drinking 40 percent alcohol you're going to feel that as well but concentrate on the spice on the very tip of your tongue and it stays and it stays and it stays. And that's what Irish whiskey is mostly known for, that lovely smooth long finish. And as it is going down, of course we're feeling the warmth, but you're getting this lovely honey-like caramel chocolate feeling melting away on your palate. So as I'm going to stay here and I'm going to finish the glass, I wish you all the best and you never know, we might see you over here on the Emerald Isle to have an old whiskey or two with you. Slaincha, Ihoa. Well, Patrick was a gentleman, he came from decent people. He built a church in Dublin town and on it was a steeple. His wife was a Gallagher and his mother was a Brady. His uncle was a shock, and his father was a Grady. Hello there boys and girls and a happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. This is Fiorua with Watch the Story with Fiorua live from the Midlands. Are you all enjoying St. Patrick's Day boys and girls? Oh, it's great fun all together, isn't it? Now, what do ye know about St. Patrick? We just taught this stuff in school, huh? The story of the fella that came over from Wales, only 16 years of age, brought over as a slave and he escaped so he did. And when he was over there in Wales minding sheep, he had a bit of a dream and he heard the Irish people saying, Patrick, Patrick, will you come back over here and bring your wise holy ways with you? And off he went back to Ireland again and he got a shamrock and he said, you see this shamrock here, boys and girls? The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is called Christianity and the rest, as they say, is history. Now, boys and girls, there's a story that was set around the Midlands you might have heard of called the Children of Lyr. Now Patrick made a guest appearance in this story. I'll tell you more about that in a while. But let me tell you all about the Children of Lyr. You see there was this great king and his name was Lyr. And he lived on his own with his children in a big castle down by the Loch Ree area there. Now his children were very, very good and mannerly children, very sporty as well. The oldest was Fanula, then there was Ave, then Fiacra, and then Con. Now they were great at playing hurling and they loved their daddy and they were great at fishing too and had a great time all together. And then one day they were playing a game of hurling out in the back of the castle. And Lear looked into the distance and he seen this old beggar lady a big cloak on her and a hood over her head. He says, who's this stranger coming into my land? And he was a bit scared. And the stranger got closer and closer and he seen these blue eyes coming through the shawl and a, a beautiful woman slowly appearing into his sight. She took off the hood and who was it? but a beautiful red-haired lady called Aoife. Well, Lear was over the moon. What a beautiful woman. I'll marry her straight away. And it wasn't long before she moved into the castle, got her suitcase and moved into the spare room. And she said, I look after the kids. I'll do the washing up. I'll do whatever's needed around the house. Don't worry about it. And Lear said, oh, this is fantastic. And the boys and girls, they were happy for a while. And Fiacre got a bit worried when he kind of seen this kind of strange look that she used to give him. Bit of an evil stare. Kind of like the Morrigan 
that we talked about before in other Fiorua stories. Well, after a few weeks, the boys and girls started to get together and say, We don't know about this one, Aoife. She's not very friendly, is she? And she doesn't play with me, said Con, the youngest fella. And she doesn't play with me either, said F. Or me, Fanola. She doesn't play with me or go fishing with me. And she's always bossing me around. But then when Daddy comes into the room, she's all nice. There's something I don't like about her. Ah, it's okay, said Fiacre. Maybe she's just a little bit shy meeting you children like us. Give her a while, she'd probably fit in grand. Well, they gave her a while, but she didn't change much. Until one day, she came into the children's playroom in the castle and she said, Boys and girls, would you like to uh, come for a little swim down by the lake there? Okay, Jenny, she's really, really nice. Okay, Aoife, I'll get me swimming togs, said Con. Go on, get your armbands too while you're at it. And they all ran down to the Loch Ree, down by the lake. Oh, it was a lovely summer's day, and they all jumped into the lake. When they jumped into the lake, they noticed that Aoife had this evil laugh. <laughs> And she took out a big wand. <laughs> and she threw the wand towards the children. I am going to turn you all into swans. What? Swans? Oh no! For 900 years. 900 years in the boys and girls? Are you serious? I don't want to be a swan for an hour, never mind 900 years. That's what I will do, though. Wah! And all of a sudden, young Con grew a beak. Fiacre started to get webbed hands. And they all slowly turned into swans, feathers all over them. Oh, no! Look at the stand of us. We'll never even be able to go let into school again looking like this. I can't be my friends won't even recognise me. Next thing, who comes along? Only King Lear. What's going on here? Oh, it's okay, my love, said Aoife. I've just turned the children into swans. Honest to God, it's fine. You don't have to thank me. You what? I turned them into swans. They were a bit of a nuisance going around the castle. Now we have the whole place to ourselves, and they're gone for 900 years. Well, King Lear was very angry. And what did he do? Well, he had his own bits of magic too. And he said, I curse you, Aoife. And he changed her into an air demon. Did you ever hear of an air demon, boys and girls? Well, she was up in the sky, a big ugly air demon. Ah! She flew into space, never seen again. Oh, the swans slowly went up towards their daddy. Oh, what are we going to do, daddy? We're swans for 900 years. And their father, oh, he was very upset. A tear came to his cheek. My children, I love you so much. I promise you, we'll meet again. Now, off the swans went into the lake. Because, you see, when Aoife's turned them into swans, she said that there had to be 300 years on the lake, then 300 years on the sea. There's not only the sea of mile, one of the scariest places you could ever imagine, and another 300 years on a place called Inish Dlora. So they sailed into the lake for the first 300 years. They got used to being swans. They got fairly handy at the old swimming and the racing and people start feeding them bread down in Kusan Pint and stuff. It was good crack for a while. After the first 300 years then, they said, Right, we have to go to the sea. The sea. <laughs> oh no, God, I don't. It's okay, Con, come on. The sea of mine, it sounds really scary. So they lifted their wings and flew off the lake. And for 300 years, boys and girls, that's a long time, they flew over the Sea of Mile, a very windy ocean, rain, storms, clouds, flying for 300 years. Eventually, they finally seen an island come into the distance. Oh, look, said Fiacre, I, I recognise that island. This must be Inish Glora. You see, Aoife said if you stay for 300 years on Inish Glora, Eventually, a holy man will make an appearance and ring a bell. And then, you will no longer be swans. So they got to Inish Glora anyway. And the first hundred years went back, they went past in a flash. No bother to them. Second hundred years, ah, 
they got a television in and it wasn't too bad. And in the last 300 years, should have had a PlayStation. They were sorted. Eventually, one morning after 300 years in Inish Glora, they heard this sound. Boom. Boom. Oh, what's this? Is it a Buddhist retreat or something in that lawn? I don't know what it is. <gasps> and into the distance came a man with a big beard. You start to recognise this fella, huh? What? 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 A big green cloak. Oh, I know him. Hold on. And a big staff. Oh, it's St. Patrick himself. That's right, boys and girls, St. Patrick. Along he came anyway to the swans. At this stage, the swans' feathers were very dirty and they were very tired looking. And he said, I am St. Patrick. It is prophesied that I must ring this bell and change you back into human beings. Oh, would you do us a favour and ring your bell, St. Patrick, said poor little Con. I'm 306 years old. Actually, 906 years old. I've, I've, I've given up counting at this stage. Okay, said Patrick. Bong. And the feathers disappeared. And suddenly the faces came true. Now, at this stage, boys and girls, they were 906 years of age. So their faces were very crinkly looking, like tin file after you crush it, you know what I mean? And they kind of disappeared into the land. And then they made this beautiful light. And they flew up to the sky. And the stars were shining in the sky. But the children flew towards one particular shining star that they seemed to be attracted to. That star was the spirit of their father, Lyr. And the four children gathered around Lyr and made a beautiful pattern of stars that you can still see in the sky tonight. Boys and girls, a happy St. Patrick's to you. This is Fiorua. We'll watch the story with Fiorua. How are you by ya? <laughs> for this St. Patrick's Day. I hope you enjoyed our broadcast. I hope you enjoyed the dancing and tunes and songs and whiskey and more here from Athlone. Don't forget to visit Sean's Bar here in Athlone when things get back to normal. Visit the castle here in Athlone and come along and spend a few days here if you're not from around the place. Okay guys, La Farik Hunna Thank you very much and Slaan Anish.